Officer Dan and your boy from Down Under, Johnny Caps here with the skinny on adjusting the rear drum handbrake for the Z32, R32, R33, and R34. So let's get that e-brake working fresh AF. Here we go. Head into the car, lift the handbrake up, and then locate the adjuster. Grab a 10 millimeter deep socket and loosen the adjuster nut, making sure that it doesn't fall off until it's flush with the end of the rod. If you can't see it well, you can remove this if you have an S chassis. We're running the nut all the way out as the adjustment should be done at the rear brakes and not at the upper cable, making for an accurate adjustment. Now let's head to the back, pop off your lugs and your wheel, then your hubcentric ring, if you're a G, and remove the caliper via these two bolts in the back. Get it out of the way. The disc should come right off, but if it doesn't, there are two threaded holes on the disc that you thread bolts into and should push the disc away from the hub. If it's really stuck on there and the shoes are too tight, you will need to adjust the tensioner. You can use a flathead screwdriver to push the teeth on the adjuster upwards, like so. This is the adjuster you'll be adjusting. It threads in, making the length shorter, therefore decompressing the shoes. The clicking that you hear is the adjuster teeth moving past the spring. That also keeps it in place as well. Now remove the disc. As you can see, we've gone ahead and removed the wheel hub and handbrake components so you can see the full install and adjustment from the get-go. So let's put it all back together. You're going to start by grabbing the rear handbrake shoe. It's the one with the lever attached to it. This lever pulls the handbrake when you yank that lever. Install it by flipping the shoe over and connecting the cable by pulling the spring back, clipping it into the shoe, and then releasing the spring. Flip it back over and seat it into its position on the backing plate. This little guy here is the anti-rattle pin retainer spring. It keeps the shoe secure, but flexible. There are two vertical cuts on the backing plate where these will be located. To install them, slide them in vertically, then rotate them 90 degrees to be in the horizontal position. As you can see, we'll be installing it vertically, then rotating horizontal so it locks in place as so. Locked, unlocked, just like my heart. The handbrake cable must also be seated correctly behind these forks. Now fit the adjusting screw spring in between one of the shoes, then connect it to the other shoe at the bottom. Now fit the adjuster in between them, pressing the shoes up against the backing plate. Now install the return springs and the guide plate, making sure to install the guide plate facing upwards towards the shoes. As if there were a problem, it keeps the shoes upright, shown kindly by this finger dance. The return springs stretch over to the handbrake pivot pin, and it's easier to use pliers for this unless you have buff hands. Install the strut and spring, doing the spring side first, pushing the shoe to the side and popping it into place on the other side. Make sure the long side is facing outward and the short side is facing backwards for the handbrake lever. Now install the other anti-rattle pin retainer and spring, as we explained before, locking it horizontal. It's demo time! This is what it would look like if you were to pull the handbrake and look at the mechanism at the same time, which would be impossible if you were by yourself. Thanks to the magic of video, you can see this all happening. As you can see, the handbrake cable pulls the lever, pushing the front shoe against the disc, which then pushes the rear shoe against the disc, locking both of them at the same time, hopefully sending you into some sick drift or holding your car in place at the local Kmart. Back to reality, it's adjustment time. Let's install the brake disc back to the car and toss a few nuts on to push against the disc. Use some long open-ended nuts to push the disc all the way down. Insert shameless plug here for our GK Tech lugs. Now give it a spin to make sure nothing is binding. Remove the dust boot and turn the adjuster downwards to the max the shoes can go outward until they lock the disc in place. This means that the shoes are as outwards as possible and are hitting the disc evenly, which you can now easily adjust by going upwards in increments of one click at a time. Click, then rotate, then click, then rotate, checking the shoe to disc drag until they're barely touching the disc at all. There is no nominal number of clicks as this adjustment is determined by the condition and wear of the shoes and discs themselves. Head back inside the car and the cable should still be loose. Adjust this based off a of personal preference, but don't go too tight as it will cause the drum brake to drag. And ain't nobody got time for that. Tighten it so that there's no slack in the cable. Put your wheels and lugs back on and enjoy pulling your arm out of socket, ripping that freshly adjusted e-brake. Officer Dan and Johnny Caps are out there on the internet doing things. Give them some love. We Audi like 5,000.